at some point, you'll very likely want to fire some of your real estate photography clients. It happens to all of us at some point in our career, but there are easy ways to do this that can save your reputation and get more clients as well. I've shot literally thousands of homes. I've worked with hundreds of real estate agents over the years, trained a number of different photographers. I've seen this problem arise more than once because sometimes clients can be quite a drain. There are some that just take so much of your time and time is money. And in those cases, there's ways to deal with it to try to improve the situation. But there is an end game where sometimes there is no choice but to move on. So how do you do that? Well, that's what I wanna talk about in this episode. Episode, not just on firing clients, but also maintaining them, trying to save the relationship and saving the situation, but when you might actually go too far. So there's a lot of reasons that you may want to actually fire a client because you're having problems. It could be that they're constantly late. They constantly have to reschedule. Maybe they don't have the house prepped very well. Clients are still there or occupants of rentals are still there. They're not moving around. A lot of things could be just not ready for you while you're on site. Maybe they start complaining about pricing. They're complaining about quality. They're complaining about a lot of things, but some of those things might be valid and it might not be a reason to fire them necessarily. Some of these could actually be opportunities because sometimes the criticism can be constructive and also it allows you to show how well you can provide customer service because everybody has bad days, everybody can make a mistake. It's about how frequently some of these issues do occur. First and foremost, if you're working with a new client, you make sure that you have set all the expectations up front before you ever arrive at the shoot. That means that they should be fully aware of the price. You should have given them a price list. That also means that you need to provide them with a checklist as well. But that price list should also have on it, not just the price, but the time expectations. So if this is a standard real estate listing, then this should be showing not just the price, but then the expected time that you would be doing this shoot. That gives you flexibility. If you show up someplace, things aren't ready. It's like, okay, well, you know, we only have an hour and a half for this particular uh, gig then move on, you can then work your conversation from that point forward. But the prep checklist is also very important. Now, you'll hear other photographers say, nobody ever reads the prep checklist. Well, grab the one off my website, I don't care, put your own name on it at nathancoolphoto.com, you'll see it there on my website. Download it, make it wherever you want, because this really does help. If somebody doesn't read the checklist and you arrive and things aren't ready, you can easily tell them, it's like, oh, I'm so sorry, I don't know if you saw the checklist that I sent, and then you have an opening to start that conversation. Always be the better person. You're the one who should be prepared even if somebody else isn't. But that's really for first time clients. There's a lot of things to take into consideration as time starts moving forward. There's a difference between doing standard, average real estate listings compared to doing very large luxury properties or doing uh, architectural work for designers, builders, uh, remodel companies, stuff like that, that you charge by the hour. Now, you know if you've got my book on business techniques for real estate photography, I talk about some of that stuff with new clients and setting expectations as well as how to charge for that. And by the way, I have a link to that book down in the description for this video. It covers a lot of the things that I'm talking about here, and in particular, when you're looking at a paid by the hour gig, all bets are off the table. A lot of these things that you may find annoying when you're doing standard real estate shoots, they don't really take effect when you're working with paid by the hour gigs. You show up to a paid by the hour gig, things aren't ready, no big deal, the clock is ticking, <laughs> you're charging them, they're paying you for this time that you're spending on site. In fact, those are the times when somebody may give you more direction. One of the most annoying things at a real estate listing shoot that has a limited time and a fixed price on its gig is someone who wants to walk around and nitpick and tell you how to do your job. Well, when you're doing stuff that's paid by the hour, that's entirely okay. You should let them come through because you need to make sure that you're meeting their expectations. I'll do uh, stuff for remodel companies and for builders, and I might be there for two, three, sometimes four hours, 
they may only get anywhere from five to 10 photos because that's what their expectations are. They wanna make sure that these are market perfect. Now, if I'm doing a real estate listing, that's completely different. So that needs to have a different approach. So if you're doing real estate listings and someone is following you around and wanting to see what's going on, you can politely tell them, it's like, oh yeah, it's great, but I have just so much time to be able to do this. And of course, if they're enlisting, if they're wanting to fiddle around, do all this stuff, they're starting to fall into this lower category that we're gonna get into in just a minute on how to prioritize them. But you have to be aware that there are two differences on how you would deal with clients based on, is it just an average listing or is this an opportunity where you're working on a paid by the hour gig doing luxury photography or something for architectural wise like for designers and builders? Something I found to be very useful when it came to real estate listings is when somebody wasn't prepared or if they were trying to give me direction on what to do, moving stuff around as we went, to let them know that, well, I might not be able to do this, but I can always do a comeback shoot. Here's how you approach it. When you first arrive for a standard real estate listing shoot, take maybe a five minute walkthrough, but no more. This isn't going to be a large one. When you're doing luxury properties, one reason you charge by the hour is because the walkthrough could be a half hour <laughs> just into itself to get through a large property. But when you're doing a condo or something else or a standard house, 2,000, 3,000 square feet, then that's not that much time, five minutes, that's easy to go through and let them know if you see things that aren't quite ready, things they could do while you're shooting other areas of the property and also then that option of, well, I'm gonna have to shoot it as is, but I'll make you a deal on a comeback shoot to capture things that we don't get here today. But there are times when it's gonna be you. There's gonna be times when you'll make a mistake. And this is when they might say, hey, you know, I'm not happy with this, or you need to come back, you missed some stuff over here. Well, there have been a couple times I've missed rooms, and what do you do? You rush back out there as soon as you can. That's on you, you need to fix it, and you need to kill them with kindness. You need to be the nicest person, because what you're doing now is you're being a problem solver. Yeah, it's taken some effort on your part to fix this problem, but the fact is, that's also an investment in you to be able to show that client who will talk about you and your reputation to others that you have great customer support. Ask them to do something, they were right out there and they did it for me. So those are important things, but sometimes those things aren't on you. Sometimes you'll get clients that will say, hey, I'm not happy with the photos. <laughs> That does happen from time to time. Well, and think about what they're talking about. If it's just a generality, uh, composition, didn't like the lighting, didn't, these things may not be fixable by you. So is it worth to go back out? Is it worth it to do more editing for them? But more importantly, is this really your fault? Take a close look at the work. If you're happy with it, and it's the same work you provide other clients, and they're happy with your work, then you just approach it very simply with this. You just tell them and you apologize. I'm so sorry that you're not happy with the work, but I hope that at some point in the future we can still work together. That right there tells them two things. One, you're not gonna do anything about it. <laughs> That's done. We've closed this deal but you've kept the door open. You didn't burn the bridge, and that's very important. If they came back to you and said, well, we'd like to do this, this, and this, and this, then you could say, well, tell you what, I'll make you a deal for a comeback shoot. And this is my fallback, that if things just don't go right, you can always offer to do more, but you're going to charge more for it, but in a very nice way. But after you address all these things and you see a, a continued pattern of behavior, then there's other steps you need to take and that's where you start prioritizing your clients. I call these star clients, the ones that are at the very top and then at the very bottom, the clients that I don't wanna work with again. I don't really have a name for them, but they're just not the clients I wanna work with again. Those are the ones that you'll probably wanna fire. So there's different ways to handle this in two fronts. One is in your scheduling, another is in pricing. I wanna cover both. We'll start from the top. If this is a top tier client, they're one of your star clients, they call you, they need a gig, then no matter what, go out and do it. Make time for that client because you should always be leaving, and remember this also, it's gonna fall into place here as we move forward here, is that you always need to have a couple slots open during the week. Even if you don't try to make time for them, always give them alternatives, even if it means you have to come out someday over the weekend and do it and work late at night to get that done, if this client really is top tier. 
That means that, yes, they do give you a lot of work. Yes, they do pay you well, but also the effort is worth it. In other words, it's one thing to have a client that can give you a lot of work, but if that client is exceptionally rude, they're exceptionally late, they rarely ever pay on time, it causes you a lot of stress, but also a lot of time chasing them around to get invoices paid or you know, sitting there for a half hour waiting for someone to get you property access. Well, that's also not a really good client. I'm talking about good clients. Good clients are they're on time. They have the house prepped. They pay on time. They pay you well, and they also give you a lot of gigs. Now, the pay thing will change when we get to the lower end clients. So when I talk about paying well, I'm saying that this is something that gives you a steady income. So no matter what, top tier clients always give them everything they need. Now, let's say that you have the next tier of clients, you don't get necessarily a lot of work from them, they're okay clients, don't really have a lot of problems with them. Well, if you're only getting maybe a shoot a month or six shoots a year from them, I would consider them the next tier down. However you want to categorize it though, they're not exactly the top level client. So in those cases, once again, you need to keep always a couple slots open during the week. If they want you to come out and you only have two or three slots open, tell them that you're busy that week because you want to reserve those slots for your top tier clients. Unless it's a really good gig, unless they're going to you know, pay well for a whole bunch of stuff that you're going to be doing, then maybe make room for them. But if you're down to two, maybe even just one slot, you need to push that out a little further. Saturdays are though an option. I would still give a Saturday option for this person, but that comes with an added price. So one thing on the price list to always have is what your Saturday charge is. And I typically don't work Sundays, only for my exceptional top tier. So I don't even advertise that I would come out on a Sunday. But if you want me out on a Saturday, an extra $150. A lot of times they'll just push that out till the next week, but I've had clients that say no problem. And that's the only day, for instance, that their sellers are ready or whatever it is and go out there on that. But let's talk about the next level of clients. And these are clients that start getting into that area of should I keep this client or should I not keep this client? If you have a client that gets you one gig a year, they're probably falling into this category. But if they only give you one gig a year, but they pay well, everything's on time, they're exceptionally nice people and you love to work with them, move them up a tier. So what I'm talking about here is where, yeah, there's usually some problems, they're just okay clients. You don't mind working with them at all, but you wanna make sure that you still are leaving time for those clients in the upper tiers. So if you have three slots open, no, nah, push them out to the next week. I really wouldn't give Saturday alternatives for that because once again, if you're talking about trying to make room for your other tiered clients, you want to leave that Saturday spot open or Saturday spots open. So I would definitely not give a Saturday option, but I would definitely tell them that, well, you could come out. I'm available next week and then you could come out. Now, the lowest tiered clients. Now, these are the clients that you really don't want to work with. They've been rude. They've been late on payments, any of the above. They uh, don't have the houses prepped. They take up a lot of your time. They're constantly nitpicking about stuff. They're just a money pit. They don't make you any money at all. You go into the negative after the amount of time and stress and everything that you have to deal with them. Leave them for somebody else, but you handle it in a very simple way. It's through two things, scheduling, and we're going to get the price next. On the scheduling portion of it, it's so different from the other tiers that I just mentioned in that you just aren't available and there are no options. All that you have to tell them is like, oh, I'm so sorry, but I'm booked for the next three weeks. And that's safe to do because you want to keep open, let's say 10 slots a week. Well, if you want to keep open 10 slots a week, you don't want them occupying it. So yes, you are booked because you are saving those slots for your particular clients. So that's just a safe way to do that instead of having to say, well, I never want to work with you again. But the next thing is pricing, which can work in your favor in a couple ways with all of your tiers. So what you do is you create a price list that is priced higher than what you would be charging your top tier clients. Now, this does a couple things. One, when new clients come in, you're price throttling. It's something I talk about in the Business Techniques book where you start gaining enough clients, well, it's supply and demand of your time. So you should be charging more for that. 
but it also allows you to tell your existing clients or clients that you really do favor. Maybe they were by a referral or some other reason that you really want to keep these clients that you could tell them it's like, hey, yeah, well, these are my normal prices, but for you, I'll charge. And then you give them a slight discount. Boom, great customer support. At the same time, you are giving them a deal and everybody else, that's the fair price because you don't know these clients yet and you need to price throttle. Now, let's say that you're just starting out and you don't have any clients and there's no clients and prices to throttle yet because you're not that busy. Well, you should still think about keeping those prices a little higher and when somebody asks just for your price list, send it to them because if all they're looking for is price, they're not that interested in you. Now, if they were by referral, that's different. You get a call, someone says, so-and-so that you know referred me, said you're a great photographer, I saw your work, I love it, I'd like to have you shoot my listing. They start talking about it, and then during the conversation, they say, oh, well, could you send me your price list? That's different. You could tell them, well, this is my standard price list now, but since you were referred by Donna or Ken or whoever that is, then I will give you the same pricing that I'm giving them. So it gives, once again, they're getting a great deal. They love it that they got the referral for that and it's great customer support as well. But that's just on handling the scheduling and pricing. There's some bad approaches to firing clients and I've heard of photographers doing this. I see this out in social media. I cringe when I see it and there's some things you should never ever do. What you should never do is tell a client that you wanna fire that that's what you're doing. You don't wanna tell them that I don't want to work with you ever again. I'm sorry, but this relationship has ended. You don't want to do that. It's just going to be a conversation that will never end and it will never end in your favor. Because agents talk, clients talk, you have a reputation to uphold. Your best bet is to be a busy photographer. Have your schedule filled and let them know that you just don't have time to fit them in. That's all that it takes. It's really that simple. They will start using other photographers because they have no choice. You're busy, well, they gotta find somebody else. And when they do, that's the new photographer's problem. <laughs> but they'll be using that photographer going forward. You'll probably never hear from them again. If you ever do, it's rare. But keep that door open. You never wanna burn bridges. Never, ever, ever, ever. People do change and things may change. That particular realtor may start working with another partner, a different agent, different brokerage, something else that maybe improves who they are and how they can work better with you. Also, keeping them still on the back burner but not working with them regularly, you can price throttle them. You can say, okay, yeah, I don't mind doing that, but my new prices, by the way, just to let you know, are, and let them know. Now you can actually charge more than you did the last time you worked for them. So that could also be another opportunity. But more so, people do change over time and everybody deserves a second chance. If though you're on their third and fourth chances, that's a little bit different. We all wanna maintain clients. We wanna have a good steady flow of income. But having clients is a business relationship and relationships are two-way streets. You aren't just some servant that is there to shoot pictures. It has to be a relationship that works for both parties. That's the way it is in any business. Any business can refuse a customer if they feel they need to. You are no different as a business either. But it doesn't mean that because they are rude that you also have to be rude as well. Just because they aren't on time doesn't mean that you have to ignore or ghost them. Always reply, always respond. You can always wait a little while to respond to show that you are busy, but always respond. And for the clients that you really don't want to maintain, just tell them that you're busy. You'll keep doors open. You'll keep an open bridge to other opportunities, but more so, you'll be able to start prioritizing your clients. And by prioritizing the right type of clients and getting the right type of work, then you'll be able to grow your business because that will help to increase your reputation and also your skill set and also make you a happier photographer overall.